This is Curacao. How does it have any power left in it? A is the kind of the popular place where the cool kids sit for lunch. All of a sudden, bang! The whole anchorage had spun around and we were so close to this boat behind us. Of course we got the map and then um, we immediately ignored the map. It's so different from everywhere we've been. It's like, oh, suddenly kind of built up. I saw a basket and robins. Thank you for coming with us on this rather unusual journey. That's the end of Red Seas now. We are yeah. <laughs> no longer able to upload videos from our incarceration. Until then, we'll be illegal. We've never been here. We actually don't really know what there is here. Uh, but we are closing in on the Spanish waters, the port that we're going to stop in, which means we have to take down the Kraken, who has done an amazing job today. We actually probably pushed the limits a little bit. We always pull down the spinnaker around 18 knots, and I think once or twice, maybe it's in 19 or 20. I saw 22 at one point. 22? Kraken might be a little bit stretched out now. Uh, it just like swung around and then I was like, whoa, get it back to downwind. But it was brief. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll douse the spinnaker and then we have to figure out where this entrance way is. It's supposed to be kind of narrow and then work out where we can drop the hook. So I'm gonna put all the, all the pressure on this side is gonna be on your sheet, not on the guy. I gotcha. Okay, all the lines out of the water. Yeah. Got almost all the way down. I was like, how does it have any power left in it? I think the uh, sock bunched up inside this. Oh, man. Well, that was a bit dramatic. Typically, we didn't maybe catch that on camera. I'll have to find out later. But uh, so we got the spinnaker all the way down using the, the sock, the snuffer, I guess it's called. And I was standing on deck, just tidying it up and getting ready to drop it into its locker. And Brownie, as we always do, changed heading to where we wanted to go because we, we usually bear off the wind to be able to put the spinnaker away and then turn back. So she turns back and then all of a sudden, bang! And a line that holds the sock down is kind of like a Y shape. So it's like a line coming down off the sock, going through a little reef knot and back up onto the sock. And then there's a single line that lets you pull it down. And just out of nowhere, that just snaps, which means the spinnaker is about to deploy itself all over again. Not a great situation to be in by that point, because I'd already taken off some of the uh, sheets and the guy lines that we use. So uh, yeah, suddenly in a panic, I'm like, okay, undo whatever you've just done and come over here and help. And we wrestled this thing into the locker, but uh, yeah, nice way to finish a very easy and fun sail, right? I'm sweating, what's that about? So we actually don't know a lot about this place. Uh, all we have been told from our friend Gary from our last anchorage is it's quite a narrow passage to get in and it's kind of got a bit of a zigzag to it. So uh, we had actually looked at it quite carefully because we thought we were going to arrive here after dark. And now that it's daylight, he's right. Uh, I actually still can't see the entranceway. There's a big hotel on one side. There looks to be a boat that, where I think the passage might be, the boat's blocking. So I'm not sure yet, but um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting arrival, I guess. I wonder if we should put a camera up front so you can see it. Still have no idea how wide this entranceway is actually going to be. <laughs> I'm getting alarms all over our AIS telling me we're going to hit like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Like 20, 25 boats. Apparently they're all on a collision course. It's a little bit tight. I don't know if they dredge this or if it's a natural cut, but it's, it's 
Probably not much wider than the boat. No, it doesn't look particularly wide. Sandals Resort with a glass walled swimming pool. So you see the line of swimming trunks staring oh, at you. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> We haven't even got into the lagoon yet and this place feels more built up than anywhere we've been in ages. It's like full sandals resort here. Everything is very curated and designed. It's like, I don't know, a stage, some kind of trapeze, huge speaker systems and a lagoon for swimming. I think I had the Lego model of that exact pirate ship. I remember those flags that went on the side like shields. I was gonna say, it's the, uh, the yellow and red stripy flag that really does it. I'm loving the juxtaposition of like all these fancy super yachts and then the proper pirate ship in the middle. You can tell we're not in Bonaire anymore. The water is definitely not the sort of vibrant, bright turquoise, clear water that we have for diving. It's uh, quite dark greenish brown, which doesn't look terribly appetizing, but it's quite cool coming through this maze system and trying to work out what we're going to see around the next corner. I can see some masts, so I think we're definitely headed in the right direction. But um, yeah, it's kind of different from what I was expecting. There are a few mountains in the distance, uh, lots of cactus and cliffs and stuff around. And obviously like it's so protected that the water is like perfectly flat calm until like jet skis come across, come past us like whizzing at breakneck speed. So uh, yeah, no idea what we're about to find in here. Oh look, we're about to do a chicane. It's got to be one of the things I really enjoy about us moving around and when we move around at pace, because you find yourself, like we've traveled a day. We've traveled 50 miles, if that, 40 miles. Yeah. And now we're in something that feels completely different, like a totally different part of the world almost. Yeah, I it's love quite, it. I, I find it so interesting and so oh, much look, fun. Look, there's boats. I can see boats. Oh, we're in the right place. <laughs> inside this maze we've heard that there's like different anchoring zones within this whole area it's all called Spanish waters but there's A B C and D so A is the kind of the popular place where the cool kids sit for lunch everybody wants to be there but if you're on the outskirts of the group then apparently all of the wake from the nearby jet skis and the tourist boats and the ferries and stuff going every single day are really annoying so you might want to go into B I don't actually know where that is or what that's about. Uh, C is the, the eclectic place where you want to get if you're really special, but it looks quite small and quite crowded. Um, or down this end is D, which I think would be cool and kind of out of the way. Uh, maybe the indie vibe, but um, you've actually got the, the huge oil tanker platform thing as your view of the back garden. So uh, yeah, we're gonna skip D for now. We're gonna go and have a look at A and see if we can find a space in the middle. It doesn't look as crowded as we were expecting. So uh, hopefully we'll find a little space. And I think that is nearest the dinghy dock and nearest everything on land. So uh, that's why everybody heads to that area. Ready? Good to drop. Drop. Okay, dropping. Another day, another place in the world, another country. Actually. Yeah, it feels really weird that we didn't travel very far and here we are. But uh, tomorrow we will go and clear in and explore and yeah, find out everything. Until then we'll be illegal immigrants. <gasps> Cheers. We woke up this morning and the whole anchorage had spun around and we were so close to this boat behind us. But we have moved forward, sorted that out and everyone is sitting a little bit happier now. So we're gonna head in and check in. In Curacao, a lot of people say it's quite a difficult process. I think we have to get a bus like right across the other side of the island into the sort of the big city um, and then do quite a lot of walking around to find all the different offices that we need to visit. But I'm quite excited to just explore the city a little bit. I think there's some murals, there'll be some cool kind of culture that we've not experienced before. So we're gonna go for a little wander around and explore and tick off all the paperwork as well. First impressions of Curacao? Ah, uh, quite <laughs> scary. 
It's so different from everywhere we've been. It's like, oh, suddenly kind of built up. I saw a Baskin and Robbins. There's a Baskin and Robbins. There's an IMAX cinema right here. We're like, going to have to go there. This is significant. It's actually, it's funny. It's almost like Trinidad when we went into yeah. town there. It's super built up, quite Western feeling, but it's 29 degrees in sunshine, which yeah. isn't Western feeling to us. But it's toasty. Go. I and forgot it's like construction that... everywhere. It's like quite significant, yeah. big bridges and stuff. I have a map to tell us where to get to the immigration office, but we need to go to customs first. And I thought that the route on my little map was how to walk between the two, but it turns out it's how to walk from here, the bus station. So we have no idea where customs is. No, but that's not a problem, is but it? But we're going to wander and follow our noses. And when has that ever let us down before? We'll follow my nose. It's OK, guys. <laughs> Calm down. That's no. not what they're here for. I had this under control. It's OK. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I do like that they call them Dremples. So it definitely kind of has a Dutch vibe to it because right through the centre of the city there's this like canal system which just feels very Amsterdam, I think. Yes, yeah, it's like, well, they kind of half heartedly, they haven't done like full on. It, it's uh, just a nod to it. System. Yeah, exactly. It's like they got <laughs> bored halfway through. But then all of the buildings are like really brightly coloured and I don't know, I don't know much about Spanish culture yet, but it, it feels uh, kind of Spanish actually, too. Actually, I looked into this. It's quite a funny story. So way back in the day, uh -huh. the guy who kind of was the president, mayor, leader of this place, yeah. a story has it he went up some hill somewhere on a jog, I guess, and all the buildings back then were all painted white, and it, he didn't like the way it glared in his eyes, oh, so he no, made the rule. you can't possibly have that. Yeah, so he made the rule that everyone had to paint their buildings. Oh, nice! So everyone painted their buildings in nice bright colours, and it was all lovely, and it stopped glaring in his eyes. Like, 50 years later, they looked into it after he died and he'd moved on and everything else. They looked into him a bit more and realized that he was like the founding stakeholder in a paint manufacturing company <laughs> and had made millions out of the deal. Oh, that's amazing! It was completely corrupt. So, yeah, oh. thanks to him, it's a pretty painted buildings type place and it's entirely because it's corruption. Oh, that's awesome! Of course, <laughs> you would do that if you were like stakeholder in a paint company. Yes, everybody must use this. It's great. I love it. Told you I was on it, guys. Find it. Oh, look at you! Hey, I saw the flags! Those weren't the flags you saw, you saw them in a totally different building. <laughs> I'm trying to take credit where credit's not due. Alright, as always, customs agents, you are awesome. They're super friendly, super welcoming. And now we have to find immigration, which we're told is somewhere underneath that bridge. So, uh, somewhere. it's time to get walking. are very Amsterdam-esque, like tall skinnies all stuck together. So we walked down to cross over the next bridge and uh, as we got here it just like swung out of the way to let a couple of boats through so I thought we'd missed our window but it seems to be on its way back. It's a cool design because it's just a bunch of small hulls, like boats. And then at the very end of the bridge, there's one boat that has a motor going forward and back. So it just drives the bridge and it like swings around. It's cool that everybody who was on the bridge just stayed on the bridge. Only one side disconnected. So uh, yeah, they just stayed there as the whole thing swung out of the way. It's really cool. We're going to have to have our sea legs talk across it. <laughs> I thought you were joking when you said we'd need our sea legs, but yeah, I keep like nearly falling over here. All right, what are you smug about? <laughs> Having not known anything about the cultural history of this place, I'm loving it. It's, it's as if I own it, really. It's, it's like coming like that, home. Yeah. It's strange that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere we look, I just see Brion, which is only one letter short of Bryony, really, and it's written everywhere. I don't know if it's a person or a place or a historical event or just, you know, like a sense of righteousness. It's well, like a hotel named after it. <laughs> I don't know. There's some old dude on a statue and his name, I think, is Brion. But so. like even the pharmacies are named after me here. After him. <laughs> uh, are you sure about that? Has anyone told you? Have you I, verified it? I am sure about that. I'll just shove it on the end. No one really pays attention. Yeah. If they were excited when they'd written it, they would have put an exclamation mark, which would basically look the same anyway. Save me. 
So actually, as most of our navigation goes, we went on Facebook and Brian managed to get somebody to send a map that showed how to get to immigration. And usually customs and immigration are really far apart here. And they're normally like next door, even in the same building. But in this case, it's like, I don't know, a mile and a half, two mile walk. But uh, of course we got the map and then um, we immediately ignored the map because <laughs> we never use maps. There was a red light on it saying go this way and across the bridge and under this and around the corner. And we were like, I think we can see a shorter route. We, we definitely know best. Yeah. Let's go our way. Red is a, a color of suggestion, not instruction. <laughs> uh, however, in our shortcut, I'm, I'm not really sure where we are now. It does say up here, not an entrance. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so we need to get on the other side of this giant bridge, which looks like if IKEA made a bridge, they'd make this. Oh, it um, does. But yeah, we need to find our way around to the other side of the bridge. And they do say the parts of this town are a little bit dodgy to walk through, so maybe we won't go up the dusty alleyway. <laughs> what do you think? Good idea? <laughs> Live, die. <laughs> Live, die. Oh, go on! Bye! Okay, surprise, surprise, that didn't work. What do you mean that didn't work? It might still be working, we just don't know yet. We, uh, we definitely got to a dead end, and uh, when we looked more closely at the map, we realised that all the roads we were going to try were going to get to a dead end, and surprise, surprise, we're now back on the red line and the route that we had on the map originally. I don't originally. know if we are, actually. No, we're not. We, we tried to be, and then we took a wrong turning. Yeah. We, we knew we had to walk up until we hit a main road, and we walked up for about 10 or 15 minutes, and we were like, oh, this is a lot further than we thought, and we looked at the map, and we'd gone way past it. So uh, yeah. we're sort of like spiralling in, hopefully closing in on immigration. But... Through the residential streets and the, the dark alleyways. <laughs> I don't think this is the way they recommend. But, you know, we're seeing a lot. It's lovely. It's educational. That's it. I'm really not sure how to get home from here. <laughs> At least it'll be a different route, so we'll get to, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. There you see go. See something new. It's always nice. And I can see the bridge. And we need to go under the bridge, so that's a good sign. We've got ourselves back to where we were this morning. <laughs> it's not back to where we were. We're on track. We're on track, yes. Yeah, mm, Highly probably, recommended route. Yeah, if you want to follow our trace, you'll know where not to go. <laughs> but you'll get a great tour of the city. Well, this is fast becoming one of the more interesting immigrations we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> so, it turns out to get to immigration, you have to check into the industrial port. So you go through a security gate that's behind us. A very nice lady takes your passport number and checks you into the industrial compound and then uh, you're free to wander around between the uh, tankers and random distillation facilities. I don't know what these things are. It's a heavy machinery. Let's it just call it that. It definitely feels like it's not designed for pedestrians. <laughs> no I pavement. really enjoyed it as we just before we got to the security gate and we saw this one of the guy walking up the hill and there was like no, no visible sign that we were all cruisers, but we all knew because there would be no reason for anybody to be walking this far away from the town centre. And he'd clearly just been here and he sort of gave us that knowing smile of like, yes, you are in the right place. And you have a long way to go, <laughs> yes. So, uh, so yeah, we just have to wander past the bunkering systems and the oh. uh, giant oil tanks. And somewhere in amongst this, we will find uh, immigration. Do you think Thanks. it's all a big ruse and immigration's not here at all? It's just a practical joke we like to play on cruises when we first arrive. <laughs> it's an indoctrination. Now we work for the uh, oil companies or something. Yeah, they'll never let us go. Thank you for coming with us on this rather unusual journey. That's the end of Red Seas now. So yeah. <laughs> we are no longer able to upload videos from our incarceration. So, between the uh, vessel that's currently preparing to leave, <laughs> and our completely unescorted wander around this place, I think but we're we are, under the bridge. And we are under the bridge, as described. Ta -da! It exists. We found it. Oh, no, wait, is there, is there, please use the other door. Other door, we did not find it. <laughs> Oops. That was a mission. Oh my goodness, it took so much longer than I was expecting. I'm exhausted. <laughs> but it was cool to like, as expected, we saw a bunch of fun stuff along the way. Absolutely, I mean, yeah, we've been welcomed to Curacao. Was it the... Uh, uh, the bon, bon Bibi, Bonbini. Bon, bonbini, that's the translation for welcome. So yeah, Bonbini, everyone. So <laughs> now that we're here, um, I think 
I've earned some ice cream. Oh my goodness, it's so hot today. Good call. Yeah, all right. We're going to go hunt down some ice cream and uh, we'll catch you in a bit.